Episode 3 begins with an introduction to another ancestor, Tuklo. This segment is made to look like a silent film, which is weird because none of the other ancestors were presented in period appropriate mediums. You know, like cave paintings or tapestries. So Tuklo is the daughter of a light horseman. Tee <laughs> I said, semen. The light horsemen are the police of the Indian reserves. Her dad shows her how to shoot and refuses to let her join the light horseman because she's a woman. But she breaks the rules and braids her hair like the men do, and saves the day. As the light horsemen approach a bandit camp, they realize it's a trap and get into a shootout. Everyone is pinned down behind trees while Tuklo just stands in the open and shoots everyone. I was yelling at the TV, shoot her, she's out in the open. But she wins the day and we get another cocky smirk. Scully's trying to get his ex to go talk to Maya, but she refuses, stubborn old biddy. Vicky's on the phone to the guy who we informed on Maya's whereabouts. They want her tonight. This is probably the most unintentionally funny scene for the entirety of 2024. Maya's going for a relaxing stroll along a lake when her ancestors decide that now would be a good time for another vision. As Maya comes out of the vision, she is immediately set upon by thugs and chloroform. Thanks, ancient guardian spirits. Way to incapacitate me to the advantage of the enemy. You freaking geniuses. For some reason, these geniuses decide against taking her to an abandoned warehouse or one of their homes. Instead, they take her to the roller skating rink her uncle owns and they tie her up by her legs or what's left of them, to the ceiling. The 18 foot ceilings. They must have had to use a scissor lift to get her up there. Did the producers just want to have a dramatic shot of her hanging from the ceiling? Anyway, her foot falls off and she falls to the ground and we're treated to a scene of people arguing while we only hear her heartbeat. Fascinating. I now know what it's like to be deaf. Do deaf people hear their own heartbeat? I guess it depends on where in the audio canal the issue is. It's also revealed that they have her uncle Henry captive. What are they going to do when the trade is made? Kill him too? If so, why not kill him now? So these three redneck geniuses zip tie her to a weights bench in a storeroom, and they throw her false leg in there with her. Why wouldn't you deprive her of her mobility? Then they decide one of them has to watch her. So these three Einsteins decide that waiting outside the closed door will do. I would not be taking my eyes off her. She's wanted for killing the head of the mafia, not for stealing a loaf of bread. Don't give her any privacy. So of course Bonnie decides to go for a skate at this particular hour. They make Henry get rid of her or they'll kill them all. But Henry signs in secret to Bonnie. Wouldn't these people know that they have deaf relatives? They know Maya is a relative, but they are just white trash so it's expected that they be stupid. So Bonnie, the dumbass, goes back to her car and calls it into the cops right away instead of driving down the road a bit to make the crooks think it's safe. But one of the bad ladies teleports behind her. Nothing personal, kid. I'm pretty sure that the dispatch will be asking, Bonnie? Bonnie? Hello? Someone go check out Bonnie's last location. It's good of them to put Bonnie in the same room as Maya. And they just handcuff her hands behind her back. She can still get up and walk around the room and find a knife to cut her bonds. Or work with Maya. Idiots. Good thing that Maya waited until all this happened before she remembered that she had a knife built into her boot. Luckily, they gave her the boot back. She would really struggle to cut the zip ties from that angle and would probably be better off getting Bonnie to do it. But she does it immediately. Maya frees Bonnie and they start arguing immediately. Can't this wait? Maya's rummaging around for a weapon, but it would be better if Bonnie did it because Maya can't tell if she's making noise moving things around. Also, she had a squeaky leg earlier. She must have greased it. So the rednecks come back in and Maya's back on the floor as if nothing happened. Why? Then one of them slaps the phone out of Vicky's hand and Maya grabs it and throws it at one of the women. He takes her aim off Maya and fumbles for the phone. I think we just have to accept that these white people are all just massively incompetent morons and move on with our lives. So it's important to note that they need her alive or they won't get paid. Doesn't mean they can't shoot her in the leg or shoot her cousin. Again, they're idiots. So they get her locked in the room again. So the bad guys turn up to collect Maya and they muck around. I'm screaming at the TV. Just do the handover for God's sake. Echo's ancestors must have been MacGyver because she makes a gun with a laser sight out of old skate parts. If she's able to do this, why does she need Scully to fix her leg? So she takes out the lights and the big lass decides her best option is to pretend she's in a horror movie and go into the dark basement on her own. What a galoot. The bad guy who's here to collect Maya, whose name is Zane apparently, has a little flirt with one of the redneck chicks. 
What is it with these shows and their insistence that bad guys in the middle of a crime will flirt instead of being alert to a double cross? This is probably the scene that got them their mature rating. Vicky gets shot in the back and ends up choking on his own blood. It's pretty graphic for a Disney show, not entirely adding anything to the plot though. A bit of white zombie followed by a pretty anticlimactic action scene, as these guys aren't allowed to shoot her, so I don't know why they have their guns. They should have stun batons or something non-lethal. If they are allowed to shoot her, they are given ample opportunity. There's an interesting bit where she gets the guns from a quick and the dead cabinet and uses them as whips. I bet they had a meeting to make sure the bad guys in this shot weren't black guys. Hawkward. So eventually she stops her rampage because she sees that Zane has Bonnie hostage. But she always knew she was a hostage. Anyway, they have her on her knees ready to do the deed. The phone rings and it's Kingpin. He wants her alive. Not only that, but he wants them to be set free. So these guys died for nothing. What the hell? Ugh, his ringtone is Don Henley's New York Minute. Get it? Because he's from New York and Maya's fate just changed in a minute? Please stop. How many of them were there? Because about 10 of them leave at the end and at least five were killed. So Henry is now on Maya's side. Weird considering that he almost got killed. There's some weird song, I'm assuming it's in Choctaw language, but it sounds like a chick singing about how she won't be a whore. If only I be a whore. Scully drops off what looks like a shin guard. They joke about how she doesn't like it, but he says he can paint it matte black. He seems to be the only one Maya has a decent relationship with. I'm struggling to understand why they're implying that Scully isn't Maya's grandfather. Oh, just what we need. Five minutes of Maya riding her motorbike. Luckily, this is another 45 minute long episode. When Maya gets home, Big Chungus is waiting for her. This episode was terrible. This is a three. No one did anything that made any sense. The action was sloppy and the drama was boring. I don't want to continue watching this show at this point. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time and have a good one.